Hi, my name is Aaron, this is my show Reeducation, and today we're going to be continuing my How Does Anarcho-Communism Work series. And specifically today we're going to be talking about human nature, so laziness, greed, and all of those terrible things that a lot of people like to attribute to human beings, as well as contracts and agreements. So without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, so let me get this straight. In an anarchist society, you have no money, no state, and everything is free. So basically, anyone can just come into your little community and take anything they want, eat all of your food, and not even have to work at all? It sounds like in a week, you would all run out of food and starve. No one would work. This is all just utopian. Good on paper, but not very realistic. It's against human nature. People are lazy and greedy. Ah, the human nature argument. This is something that's brought up so often in leftist spaces that it's become a bit of a joke. Let me put it to you this way. Lazy, greedy people might exist. They might. But they are far more rare than you would ever imagine. Often, those who we see as lazy are just unmotivated put into a position or a career that they find no interest in. If these people were given a job that they actually enjoyed, you would see their interest begin to peak, and you would see them start working harder. The funny thing about laziness is often we never attribute ourselves to being lazy, but rather only other people. Commonly, we think of ourselves as hard workers. It's all those other lazy people that are the problem. But laziness and greed are traits that are amplified by incentives. Under capitalism, your incentive as a worker is to do as little work as possible while receiving as much money as you can. While the business owner's incentive is the exact opposite. It's to make you work as hard as possible for as little money as he can get away with paying you. The system inevitably incentivizes the worker to be lazy and the boss to be greedy. Now, as for you walking into the community and taking whatever you want, if you truly needed food, then no one would ever turn you away. But if I was to walk into your house and take everything I wanted, eat all of your food and not even offer to contribute, I think you'd probably boot me out of there, if not something a little bit more violent. If you're not a contributing member of that community, then you will not receive all of the benefits of that community. And if you rob people of their goods, you'd be a criminal in any society. But if you were to talk to the people in that community, like going to a community council or speaking to a representative, you could probably work out some sort of mutually beneficial agreement or contract. And then that way, you'd be able to obtain a lot of those goods, and all you'd have to do is work. An anarchist contract? What exactly is that? How would it even work? Well, to make it easy to explain, I usually refer to such a thing as a mutual aid contract, though not every anarchist uses those terms. Some anarchists call this sort of thing a pact or an agreement, but whatever you call it, it's basically an outline of what you can provide for your community and what your community can provide to you. Essentially, it works off of the axiom from each according to their ability to each according to their need. In small communities where everyone knows each other, this doesn't even need to be a physical contract. It could be a verbal agreement among people. And in some case, these situations just arise spontaneously and don't even have to be verbally communicated at all. Like you and a group of your neighbors all working together on building a greenhouse so you can grow food together. But as populations increase and complexity levels follow, written contracts and agreements would, in my opinion, become somewhat of a necessity. So what exactly are you saying? Everybody just signs contracts and hopes that everyone will adhere to them? What happens if you break the contract? Who enforces these things? Well, the community does. One of the jobs of the community is to elect a council of experts to mediate and settle contract disputes. If you violate the contract, then you would be subject to the consequences of that violation. Depending on the severity, this could mean anything from representatives meeting with you to work out a solution to the termination of the contract entirely. For example, if you agree to make shoes at a shoe factory but then never show up for work, the other employees may convene to ask you what's going on. If it turns out that you just don't want to come into work because you don't feel like it, then it is possible that this job isn't for you, and the community would want to work together to find one that is more suitable. But if you continue to refuse to work just because you don't feel like it, then the community might determine that you're in breach of contract, 
And as a result, you'll no longer be able to access all of the top-of-the-line resources that that community can provide. Wait, so you just kick me out on the street and I'd have no way to get food? This sounds barbaric. How is this better than capitalism? No, 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 no. We would never kick you out on the street or leave you without food. That's not part of our ideology. We fundamentally believe in mutual aid. But you certainly wouldn't be able to get the newest Xbox or a fresh pair of Jordans created by the local Nike Worker Co-op, if such a thing exists. So basically what you're saying is that you get everything you need to survive, but none of the extra perks. Well, I guess that does make sense. Okay, why don't you tell me how this works? I'm glad you asked. Functionally, it would work like this. When you want to voluntarily enter into a community through, say, immigration or reaching the age of consent, you would be given the opportunity to sign on to a societal contract or a mutual aid agreement, whatever you want to call it. This, of course, is totally optional and you don't have to sign in, but if you do, just like any other contract, it would work similar to a business agreement. You would agree that a portion of your skills, or whatever you wanted to create, would be donated to the community, where it would be given to the people who desire it and need it. And then, the community would provide to you whatever it was able to provide, basically anything that you could need or possibly want. The two parties would work out an agreement that suits all involved, and if you do some sort of special job, perhaps you're an artist, and you can only provide, say, one painting a year, the community might work out a deal with you that would also allow you to work part-time at another job if the community needed it, just so that we could keep the community functioning. If you have no real talent or no desire to use your passion as a job, then the community would be willing to set you up with a job that suits your interests and education and training would always be provided. Since we're trying to benefit humanity as a whole, there would be no paywall to stop people who want to be in a certain career from actually accessing those things. And this isn't about just putting a certain number of hours in at the coal mine. We would be methodically working to find out what strengths you have and how those strengths can work toward aiding the society in some way. That way, all of the people in the community would get the things that they need, and they would be able to provide to you all of the things that you need in your life to be happy and thrive. You'd finally be given the opportunity to choose whatever job you wanted and be given the abilities to actually do it. Potential doctors and scientists wouldn't be stuck behind that paywall that only allows the richest to make it through to actually get the schooling. Amazing artists will be given the tools and time required to create art and share that talent with the entire world instead of having to live hand to mouth. They don't call them struggling artists for nothing. And since we create goods and services to better humanity and not just to create a profit, we would no longer have to fear things like automation. If a machine took someone's job, it wouldn't put them out on the street, but rather give them more time to enjoy their life. They would just have to work a few hours less. Just the same, if we have more people in an industry than we actually need, the seasoned workers don't have to stop doing a job that they love, and the fresh-faced greenhorns could still get their start, it would just require everyone working a few hours less to make room. And what a wonderful problem to have! A job that you love, and more time to spend with your family. It almost sounds like a win-win. Okay, but when something sounds too good to be true, it often is. What's the catch here? What about the jobs that no one wants to do? Well, obviously in a society, there's more to do than just the things that we love. There are also things that we have to get done that nobody really wants to do. Things like working in a sewage treatment plant or emptying septic tanks. Those are jobs that few people would actually choose willingly. So, in some sort of societal contract, different methods would be used to have different individuals fill those jobs when needed, such as setting up rotationary schedules, drawing straws, or some other form of democratic method. For instance, everyone at the office has to take turns cleaning the toilet. But if there does happen to be one specific job that is especially disgusting but requires a permanent full-time professional to do it, then the person willing to make that sacrifice would obviously be rewarded heavily. For instance, the people flying in first class are not going to be the CEOs or business executives, but rather the septic truck drivers and the muckrakers. There's no reason why we can't organize society in a more equitable way that benefits the individual and the community rather than the private business or billionaire. 
the largest corporations on the face of the earth work just fine with contracts and negotiations and agreements every single day. There's really no reason why we can't use those same methods to benefit our society. At least, that's the way I look at it. If you do get a chance, please check out all of the links in the description box below. Hit that little bell button because you know that they're not going to tell you when I release a new video. And make sure that you're subscribed because they're unsubscribing people every single day. And also, check out my merch store. I sell all kinds of uh, a aesthetic anarchist merch. If you want a Anarchy A t-shirt uh, and just be that hardcore, you can definitely find them there. And uh, also subscribe to my Patreon. Every single dollar really does help fund this show, and since I am never going to be funded by any capitalist businesses, it is really people like you that keep this show going. So thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day.